Okay, continuing chapter 12. Um, we are up to Michael Jackson. Uh, the late 70s into the 80s is where we're at. Ten years previous, the 60s into the 70s, Michael Jackson was the 12-year-old lead singer of the Jackson 5, who we talked about. And he and his brothers were huge in the early 70s, Jackson 5. Remember, their first four singles went to number one. They were all over the charts. Now, simultaneously, Michael Jackson had a solo career in the early 70s. He had several big hit singles, a remake of a song called Rock and Robin. He did Got to Be There. And his first number one single was a song about a rat called Ben from a movie of the same name. And then what happened was Michael Jackson basically fell out of the limelight for a few years. He left Motown. His brothers continued recording uh, for a couple different record companies. But Michael sort of stepped away, and he reemerged a few years later in a production of The Wiz, a musical based on the story of The Wizard of Oz that starred Michael Jackson and Diana Ross in that version. And it kind of, you know, brought him back into the limelight, but it brought him into the limelight as very much as a young adult, opposed to the, you know, 12-year-old Michael of the Jackson 5, the 15-year-old Michael of his solo career. Here was this young man who was stepping back out in front of the in front of the cameras and ultimately in front of the microphone. 1979, he released uh, an album called Off the Wall. My favorite Michael Jackson album. It's a great album. And it really showed his chops as an adult entertainer. Showed his chops as a mature singer. Better phrasing. And um, the album was huge. Off the wall. Uh, big hit on both the pop and the R&B charts. One of the biggest albums of 79 and 80. And like, remember, I was telling you, the other superstars at the time, it was very much a superstar album time. Billy Joel, Fleetwood Mac, The Eagles, etc. Michael Jackson was another one of those. The album Off the Wall generated four hit singles, the first of which, great, great, great song, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Michael Jackson from Off the Wall, 1979. Give it a listen. So don't stop till you get enough. Michael Jackson from Off the Wall. Huge. The song went to number one. Then uh, Michael takes a couple years and starts working on a follow-up project. Kind of hush-hush. People don't know a whole lot about it. But he is working on a follow-up album. And late in 1982, a new Michael Jackson song is released. And to duet between him and his then- Good buddy Paul McCartney they had a falling out later. We'll talk. But so Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney come out with a song, probably one of my least favorite Michael Jackson songs, by the way, uh, called Girl Is Mine. And give it a listen. It's a duet between Michael and Paul McCartney. It's not that bad. Whatever. But I just... Eh. Anyway, The Girl Is Mine, Michael Jackson, Paul McCartney. Uh, comes out, goes all the way up the charts to number two. It's a huge hit record. And it is the teaser, if you will, for Michael's forthcoming album. An album that we now know is called Thriller. The album is released in late 82 early 83. It does very well. It's a huge hit. It's the new Michael Jackson album. He's been gone for three years. So you would expect it to have kind of a splash. But what people could not possibly have anticipated was what came next. The second single that was released from Thriller was a song called Billie Jean. And Billie Jean, well, it ranks as one of the most important records in rock history for a variety of reasons. But before we get into those reasons, let's remind ourselves, because I'm assuming most of you know the song, but let's remind ourselves 
of The Greatness of Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. Billie Jean, the second single released from Thriller and the single that sort of ushered the album into the American consciousness and really just elevated it. Billie Jean was important because, A, it was a huge hit record. It stayed number one on the pop chart for seven weeks, number one on the R&B chart for, I think, nine or ten. But so it was one of the biggest hits of 1983. But it was important for other reasons. First, it took Michael Jackson once and for all out of the child star teen, uh, uh, you know, teen star member of the group, one of the brothers. It once and for all established him as a superstar, as a solo artist, period. But Billie Jean put Thriller on the map, brought Thriller to the next level of popularity. But the biggest thing that Billie Jean did, you guys, was this. In the late 70s, Michael Jackson started making videos for the singles from his Off the Wall album. And making videos in the late 70s was not something most artists did. First, their record companies weren't going to pay for them to make mini movies to support their songs. There was no place for the movies to play. Who cared? It was more of a vanity thing. But Michael did it, and he felt there was going to be a place for it, and he was right, because a little TV uh, network called MTV started up, and that's what they played. They played videos. But they played videos of rock music. Now, as you and I know, rock music can mean a million different things. But to MTV in the early 80s, Rock music meant predominantly male, absolutely white music. It was guitar-driven rock and roll or electronic rock and roll, which was, uh, there was a lot of that in the, in the early 80s. So they would play music by The Clash. They would play music by The Talking Heads. And, but they didn't play artists of color they can maintain that they didn't play artists of color because the style of the music didn't fit sort of the core message that the channel wanted to convey. Whether or not that's true, I don't know, but what it did in manifestation was it was a very white channel. It wasn't a very white channel. It was a purely white channel. And they had come under criticism already by the time Billie Jean came around. But what Michael Jackson did with Billie Jean was he created a video for it. I don't know if you've seen it, but you should watch it. It's the one where he steps on the sidewalk and the sidewalk lights up under his feet. Still 40 years later, that video plays. You know, it's it's still cool. But in 82, 83, it wasn't cool. It was astonishing. MTV had no choice but to start playing Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. And they did. And America went insane for this guy. And America went insane for MTV. And you look at today, you look at artists like, you know, Beyonce and, and, and Kanye West. Quite frankly, their home on MTV, the door to the living room of their home was kicked down by Michael Jackson. And don't think that that artists today don't recognize and appreciate Michael Jackson for what he did. The back-to-back -back smashes of Billie Jean and Beat It and their back-to-back -back videos really not only put Michael Jackson securely on the map, put Thriller on the map, they put MTV on the map. We probably wouldn't have MTV today without the brilliance of Michael Jackson. So as we are talking about Thriller, we've heard Billie Jean give a listen to the follow-up Another number one smash from the album called Beat It.
Eat It, Michael Jackson. And um, the album Thriller generated seven top 10 singles, which is something that had never been done in rock history before that. It became not necessarily the norm, but the whole idea of like Drake and Taylor Swift releasing, you know, dropping entire albums at a time and monopolizing the top 10 of the charts, that directly stems from Michael Jackson and his record company, Epic, deciding to release seven singles from an album. Just hadn't been done before. But they all, The Girl Is Mine, Billie Jean, Beat It, uh, Wanna Be Starting Something, Human Nature, which I'm going to play, which you should listen to next, and PYT, Pretty Young Thing, and finally the title track, seven top ten singles. Give a listen to Human Nature. Great song. Human Nature, Michael Jackson, the fifth top 10 single of seven from Thriller. And the title track from Thriller was given a full length video treatment. I believe it was a 20 minute video that was done for Thriller. It premiered in December, 1983. It got huge TV ratings. The video wound up being released as a VHS video cassette uh recording and broke all kinds of sales records you ran out to buy the thriller video and the song thriller became the seventh and final top 10 single from the album give a listen to thriller the title track by michael jackson Thriller, Michael Jackson. Before we leave Michael and Thriller behind, I want you to, there's a few superlatives that you need to know. For a long time, Thriller was the best-selling album in rock history. It has since fallen to number two on that list behind the Eagles' greatest hits. But Thriller has been certified more or less for 40 million copies sold worldwide. Seven top 10 singles, seven top 10 singles generated. It uh, was the number one album of the year 1983 and the number one album of 1984. Uh, was the first album in, in over 20 years to be the number one album of the year, two consecutive years. And it would go on to be nominated for 12 Grammy Awards, and it would actually wind up winning eight. And uh, it was just extraordinary. Thriller, to give you an example of how popular it was, Thriller sold a million copies, over a million copies in Los Angeles. I mean, you know, that's crazy. So Thriller by Michael Jackson, biggest album of the 80s by far. And in terms of the, the, the trajectory of rock history, there are few albums of greater import and impact than Thriller and greater few records. I mean, Billie Jean really ranks to me alongside, you know, records like The Twist in terms of how important it is because after Billie Jean, everything shifted. Everything shifted in a brand new direction, a direction that on some levels we're still following 40 years later. So, all right. Thriller, Michael Jackson. That's it for that. We'll get back to it next time.